people are going to stare at me anyway. Let's at least make it worth both of our time. I don't want to be used as inspirational porn. I'm not here to give you the warm and fuzzies. I'm not here to be some real, like, Disney figure. If I have inspired you to go out and take some action in your life and do something positive, then I will absolutely refer to myself as inspirational. Life is what you make of it, and I have zero intention of living mine quietly. I, I did a documentary and it, it did well. Since then I've done movies, I've done stand-up comedy, I've refereed wrestling matches. Going down the route of, of performing seemed just like a natural transition, right? I have a, a twin brother called Neil. Actually we're identical twins, probably should have opened with that. Like looking at us now we look completely different, but when we were babies we looked exactly the same. I think mum fed the same baby twice once and it wasn't me. Out of, out of myself and Neil, I am half an hour older, and it might well be the most important half an hour, not just in my life, but in human history. So we have the same condition called neurofibromatosis type 1, but it affects us both differently. He has short-term memory loss and epilepsy. So if you tell him to do something and he doesn't do it straight away, five minutes later, you're going to have to have the exact same conversation again. So I have a genetic condition called NF1 for short, what it's characterised by is non cancerous growth anywhere on the central nervous system called fibromas. Genes come in pairs, and we both share the same primary NF1 mutation. But it's when the second copy goes wrong that you get tumours. So when all this first started, it was just a small bump on, on my forehead. I was messing about in my room as, as a five-year-old, and I sort of banged my head on a windowsill. And then screamed, parents came in, checked the windowsill, checked the child, because priorities. And then, because I'm a fast learner, I did the same thing again, like two weeks later. And, and that's when we started asking more questions and going to see, see doctors. Like, I'm completely blind in this, I have been for, what, going on 20 years. Even if I did um, tighten the eyelids, it still wouldn't work, because the, the nerves at the back are just completely completely crushed and then this eye I got scarring on the front of the cornea and loads of um, fibromas around it which makes opening and closing it rather problematic. Um, I got a slight hearing loss in this ear and everything around here makes breathing not difficult but I've got to be really careful and keep an eye on it. I've had 38 surgeries on my face so far, 39 is currently being discussed and booked in, and I'm probably going to have a party for the 40th. It seems like a very crass Adam Pearson thing to do. I've already planned it, already invited my surgeon who's well up for it. I've had the same surgeon for quite a while now. He's not done all 38, but he's done well over half of them. Um, Simon Eccles at Chelsea Westminster. I think if you could just debulk that a bit and just support it a bit more at the side, yeah. that would be better. A good friend of mine, trust him implicitly, and I, I have a, a hard and fast rule. If someone's cutting your face open on the regular, you should at least be able to tolerate them and know their name. I got bullied quite a lot at secondary school. I was in a position where I was a lot smarter and a lot wittier than the people who were calling me names and giving me aggro. I'd be blowing people up in the playground, left, right and centre, and then I'd be the one who, who got in trouble. And so I thought I'd, I'd change my mindset. I'd, I'd put out good energy and see if that, that would change anything. And it, it made a real impact in, in my adolescent life. When I made the Horizon documentary, I got to go to Vietnam. Parts of Vietnam have unusually high levels of genetic disease and some of the worst cases of NF1 in the world. There were times when I felt a little bit like a spectacle, but then again, there, there are cultural variances that you, that you need to allow for and, and let people get on with it and ask, ask their questions. Meeting other people who have like not only far more serious um, symptoms in me, but have way less access to medical medical provisions than I do. It was a real emotional moment. It teaches me to not only be grateful for my 
my circumstances, what I have, but also makes you want want more for them. My mantra for 2021 is anytime there's an opportunity to educate someone on disability or have an important conversation, have it. If, if there's a moment where you're not certain what you should be doing in in your life or what difference you can make, I think there's three things that you can ask yourself and it's what do I like, what am I good at and what pisses me off. And when all three of those things line up, that's when you can make a real difference in, in the world around you. And it's almost like it sounds utterly grandiose and cliche, but you become a voice for the voiceless, wanting to make the world a fairer, better, more equal place for people with, with disabilities, to get to a point where someone like, like me can walk into a pub, have a pint, and no one stares, gets out their camera phone, or makes shitty comments. My biggest gripe by far when you deal with organisations in, in, the, in the disability space is the talk hardly ever matches the walk. I mean, we could just be finding and hiring disabled talent. Prior to lockdown, a lot of disabled people were excluded from, from the workplace based on the hypothesis that remote working isn't possible. So on March 23rd last year, when lockdown kicked in and non-disabled people needed to work remotely, oh how quickly it became possible. If we come out of the past year and however long with the exact same mindset that we went into it with, that is an abject failure for humanity. If I was to sit down with like the younger Adam and give him some advice, first of all I'd tell him it, it all winds up okay. High school's dumb. None of none of this truly matters. You're gonna get you're gonna go to uni, maybe drink a bit less for the first year. Don't be ashamed of who you are. And if you wear your identity like armor, no one can ever hurt you. 